Island Heights folks, uh, friends and family, guests, we're glad you're here. Happy Monday. And we're still digging into the Gospel of John. And so uh, it's kind of cold outside. I did a, a staff meeting with Don and Jill today just to kind of connect and, and talk. And, and it was cold. And so wind's blowing. And uh, there is a floaty that's flying around the backyard. And so we're... <laughs> We're trying to, I'm inside because uh, it, it's, uh, it's a little cold for, a little, little chilly for me. That's all right. I got the sweater on, ready to go. Uh, John chapter 6, we're at the end of 6. And remember yesterday, Jesus just declared himself as the bread of life. You remember we talked about it, it was about his sacrificial death. And uh, when he said, you know, you need to eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, it was pointing to his sacrificial death. And so we want to begin today talking about spiritual defection. I paused for dramatic effect. Spiritual defection. And so in verse 60, it says, Therefore, many of the disciples heard this. They said, is this, this teaching is hard. Who can accept it? Spiritual defection. Uh, straying from the truth. Uh, turning away from the truth. When the truth really matters, do you really run towards it or do you run away from it? And so uh, it's tough because Christ is here and he's truly find, trying to find out. He knows the heart of the man. He knows the hearts of each one of those that, that were gathering. But it's, these were his disciples. It said many of his disciples have heard this. There was a, more than just the 12 at this time. And so they had heard it around. They gathered around. They followed Christ maybe for a day, maybe for two days, whoever. But finally, it says his disciples, they were learners but they were turning away from the truth. This was too hard to accept. The bread of life, you know, eating of my flesh, drinking of my blood. They weren't connecting this to Jesus saying over and over, those of you that partake of me, that are involved with me, that are believing in me, surrendering in me, will what? Will live forever. This eternal life. And so uh, he kept going over and over again, but they could not. The comfort of their Judaism, the comfort of their the law of Moses, the comfort of their lifestyle, they could not drop and leave it. Now see, when Christ comes into your life and you're saved, you drop your lifestyle to go believe in him, to surrender, to repent, to turn to him. You're different. I mean, your job may remain the same. Um, your, your marital relationship, I mean, as a child, you still got the same school that you go to, those kinds of things. But no, your everything about you, your mind, your your all the stuff on the inside is different. Something has changed within you. You're you're born of what did he say? You're born of water and spirit, right? You're cleansed, in the washing, the 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 purification of your life. You're you declared righteous, justification, right? But then you're also uh, have the Holy Spirit, which what changes your thinking. And so, just a few things because it says in sixty one. That is, it says, Jesus knowing in himself that his disciples were complaining about this, they began to complain. Sounds a little bit like church sometimes, right? When we're hit with the truth, begin to complain. We begin to get upset. We thought, no, this is surely not for me. We begin to complain. And it, he, he starts off the bat, he goes, does this offend you? Does this offend you? And so he, he starts with this because he said, you must trust in this sacrificial death. That was the whole point here. You must trust in this. This is coming that, that I will sacrifice myself for you. But you're offended by this. Because of some of the terminology, the offensive language that may be used, that you have to eat of my body, drink of my blood. Interesting. And so even though it, it must, you know, stay... Weird to them. Listen, folks, when we go door to door and we're knocking in the, in the streets of Allen and we're talking to folks, I mean, it's interesting because I've said this before. A lot of people, we offered a prayer. No, I'm good. I've had church today. I've punched my ticket in. I've done my time. That does not indicate a life with Christ, right? It's not just there, but it's the fact that if you want to talk spiritual matters with somebody or even Jesus Christ, it's uncomfortable, and for that person, that's, if somebody claims that they've gone to church, they don't want to talk about Jesus to somebody that comes knocking on their door. You know, it's something to be said to that. 
And so, you know, we, we should have spiritual conversations all the time. If Jesus is our number one priority, then we should be talking about Christ constantly. Hey, we, we got cooler weather. Praise God, right? We had a beautiful weekend. Praise God, right? Uh, our family is safe and healthy. Praise God. Why? Because Jesus is the center of our life. He is the, uh, he's the center of our worship, right? So you must trust in my sacrificial death. That's what he says. But number one is, any time we center upon God's word, we must surrender to everything it says. We're talking about fighting spiritual defection because here it is, he says, then what, then what if you were to observe the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? He says, the words I have spoken to you are spirit and they are life. Right? There are some among you who don't believe, knowing this, right? So if, if Jesus even says in John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commands. What do you think that means? So if, if you're truly going to be a follower of Jesus Christ, you must surrender to his word. Every bit of it. Every bit of it. Not just some, and hey, I don't like that, so... Er, no, every bit of it. Second is, you have the Holy Spirit. It says the, in verse 63, the Spirit is the one who gives life. Remember, uh, he said in chapter 3, you, you know, born again, being born of water and of Spirit, right? He said, uh, Jesus told the woman at the well, what the Father is looking for those who are worshiping in who? In Spirit and in truth. In Spirit and truth, both. Wow. So he's finally getting to the crux, trying to find out who truly is going to be the ones to believe him. And he is pressing them because he, he even knows that he goes, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it's granted to him by the Father. So the moment many of the disciples turned back and no longer accompanied him, they left him, they defected from their rabbi, Right? It said, Jesus said to the twelve, you don't want to go away too, do you? It got, narrows all the way down to the twelve. It narrows all the way down to the twelve. Finally, he gets down to it and he goes, didn't I choose you, the twelve, yet one of you is a devil. He gets down to the twelve. He gets down to those that he knows that are going to follow him. He knows the heart of the man. And so he finds out they've surrendered to Jesus they surrendered to his teaching, to following him. And then knowing that uh, uh, the power of the Holy Spirit is in this, and he's already setting the Holy Spirit up. He's already telling them, hey, this Holy Spirit's going to come. The Holy Spirit's going to be a part of your life. And ladies and gentlemen, you and I who have believed in Jesus Christ, we have the Holy Spirit. So guess what ends up happening is that helps us obey the truth. That gives us the wisdom discernment that we need to help us. Because when we read it, we know when it's right. And we know when things are wrong. So we surrender to all of God's word. Second is we have the Holy Spirit that empowers us. And then third is that there are going to be some religious, social, or cultural institutions that causes us to sway and put our faith in other things. I know that's hard to believe, and that's a shocker. But if we're following some things that are unbiblical, then we need to run away from it. We need to disassociate from it. We need to make sure that everything we're doing follows the Word of God. We're careful to do that. You have a, a staff that's trying to help lead in that direction, right? You have those that declare the Word of God, your life group teachers and, and your ministry staff. They're trying to lead you in the right direction according to the Word of God, being led by the Holy Spirit. And why? Being Jesus-centered, and so with that, what, is, what, what should we do? Well, instead of placing our faith in the wrong things, making sure that we place our faith in the right things. And Paul tells it over and over again. He says we must endure, we must persevere all the way to the end. All the way to the end. And in doing so, it's uh, one, of the, one of the great passages that Paul writes and that I was looking up before I jumped into this today. 1 Corinthians 15, 1. Oh, man, it's so good. It says, Now I want to make clear to you, brothers and sisters, the gospel I preached to you, which you received, 
on which you have taken your stand and which you are being saved, if you hold to the message I preach to you unless you believed in vain. There will always be people who defect. Because why? When the Word of God it comes in and intersects with their life and they're not willing to be all in, they were never all in in the first place. He says, on which you received this gospel and on which you have taken your stand. Persevering, enduring, you have taken a stand. It's hard to do these days. We have pressure from religious institutions and cultural institutions and social differences and the society is going way away from the Lord Jesus and maybe this is the time. This virus, maybe this is the time that we return to the Lord. We return with complete surrender. Maybe this is the time where we take, where we're given pause, being shut up in our home. So why? So we reflect on what the true Passover is. Right? The sacrificial death of the Son of God. But not only power over sin by confessing to Him, but His resurrection, the power over death, that we have hope in eternity with Him. John chapter 6, Jesus says it over and over about eternal life. And I will make sure He's not going to lose one. When He comes in, and those that are risen to be with Him, He said, I will not lose one. I will lose none of them. So I'm encouraged by that. I want the seal of approval. And part of it, look, that's not greed. It said, I desire that. I shouldn't say I want, but I desire the Savior. And with that comes that seal of approval, that seal by the Spirit that I know that I'll spend eternity with Him. And so now I must come to Him. And what? I shouldn't spiritually defect. I should spiritually run. Are you running towards Him today? I hope that you are. Let's pray. Father God, we come before you. We praise you. We thank you. We give you thanks for this beautiful day, this beautiful Monday you've given us. And Father, even though the days, it just seems like revelation and that the second coming is imminent. And Lord, if that's today, let it be today. But Father God, no matter what, you're still on your throne. You always will be. You always have been. And Lord, we just come acknowledging your presence in our life. We thank you, Lord. Help us to endure and persevere. Forgive us, for Lord, for when we've defected, that we weren't willing to follow you. Lord, help us to put on surrender and humility in our life. Holy Spirit, guide us, direct us. Help us to confess our sins to you. We truly want to repent, and we're sorry for the times that we've strayed away. Help us to focus on you and you alone, especially during these days. Protect our loved ones and our families, Lord. Just be with those that are afflicted with this illness. Father, just remove it from them. Father, give the doctors and nurses strength and those that are, that are uh, keeping hospitals running, even from the custodian all the way up to the administrator. Father, just pray that you'd be, bring them peace, bring them health. Father, give them the energy to be able to uh, minister to those who are suffering. Father, for our officers, for our fire, Lord, for those that are standing in harm's way, guarding us, Lord, that are protecting us and serving us. Father, I pray you be with them. Be with our mail carriers, our truck drivers. Be with those that are working at grocery stores. Father, just pray that you'd keep them safe and protect them from this illness as they continue to serve. Be with your church, Lord. Bring us closer together, Father, in one name and one name only, and that is in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray these things. Amen. God bless you. Run to the Savior today.